I think, a, a case of the Mondays. Uh, Chris McCusker filling in for Mike Apple uh, for the next few days. And we're having some technical issues, but we have Chris here. We've got our camera. We've got some audio issues, so she's going to be like this. Hello? <laughs> Hi, Chris. How are you? This is really old-fashioned, Mel. I kind of like it. Totally. I just want a flip phone right now. Actually, I want a Zach Morris phone to feel really cool, like the big brick. Yes, how right, are you? Exactly. I'm good. How are you? Okay, how was the weekend? Um, I, it was okay. I, I, full disclosure, I got my second dose Woo! on Friday. Me too. Friday. Which was, which was very exciting, but I did not feel well on Saturday. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, everyone's yeah. very different. You hear such different yeah. stories. Mine, yeah. I, I describe mine as like a little bit of nausea, right? Just a bit of that. I was a bit off. I was more tired than I have ever been in oh. my entire life. Yeah, well, and my arm hurt too. Yes, well, that's expected for sure, but at least yeah, you're feeling good yeah. now. You're ready to rock? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, I mean, it's totally worth it. Don't get me wrong. Yes. Awesome. Okay, so let's yes. begin with I feel I feel like I need to do this, too. Okay, okay let's talk sure. about the markets, Chris. Let's go for it. Okay, okay. So, I mean, the bottom line here, Mel, yeah. is that uh, Bay Street is still the best performer in North America so far this year. So that's kind of fun. It's up by about 15%. However, North American markets coming off losses last week. And for the Dow, it was its worst loss. So far this year, it was down by 3.4%. The Dow also lower five days in a row. The S&P lower four days in a row. Uh, the TSX down by about half a percent last week. Uh, the price for oil a little higher this morning. Inconclusive nuclear talks with Iran, so no deal yet. Uh, so that means for now, sanctions are not going to be lifted, and that would have resulted in higher crude flows, which would have put the price for oil lower. Uh, and the price for oil, by the way, Mel, still close to this three-year high. And <laughs> three years ago, that was before the pandemic. I know yeah. it doesn't feel like it, but it was. Wow. Okay. Uh, new report out saying, um, yeah, ready for retail, ready for a bit of shopping. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I certainly am ready for shopping. There's a lot of pent-up demand with my credit card. What are you going to buy? I don't know. Anything, everything. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. That sounds good. We'll, we'll see. Um, so, yeah, this report from RBC kind of points to the retail sales data that we're going to get from StatsCan on Wednesday. Now, that's for April, and we are expecting a sizable decline of 5% in April from March. That comes after big gains in both February and March, though. That was before those renewed pandemic restrictions forced many shops to close their doors to in-person shoppers. RBC says their data shows sales are probably in for another decline in May, but June is looking better as some provinces start to reopen. Uh, the report also says that further improvements are likely from there, with close to half of the eligible Canadian population expected to be fully vaccinated by Canada Day. So this all will be uh, good news for the Canadian economy. And by and large, the data has actually been better than expected. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Again, the retail sales set to be released Wednesday. Okay, and finally, a lot of people are looking to book some travel. So there's one airliner, though, that's saying, wait, not so fast. Yeah, well, they're actually, American Airlines is actually having staffing problems, Mel, uh, and weather problems. So they're being forced to cancel some flights, believe it or not, despite this uptick in travel demand. This past weekend, the airline dealt with an unprecedented uh, weather issues, I guess we could say, along with a labor shortage at some of its hubs. So really, there are no other options but to cancel flights rather than deal with uh, surprises, let's say, at airports. Uh, just to offer some insight here, already in June, the TSA has regist registered 35 million air passengers. And we know vaccinations have been accelerating in the U.S. as well. So as people get vaccinated, they want to get back on planes. Yeah, they sure do. I'm already looking. At, I don't know if you are, but I'm trying to figure out where I'd like to go. I don't know where yet, just somewhere. I just want a haircut. Oh, yeah, that too. Hence the ponytail. <laughs> Didn't know what to do. Rainy day. Rainy day, yeah, Chris. See, yeah, you're it, smart. I can't deal with the ponytail. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot uh, of hairspray. A, hair, a haircut is going to be very welcomed. Absolutely. And if you're just joining us, we're having a little bit of technical issues. So we're getting some audio from Chris here. We're going to fix this for yeah. tomorrow. You rejoin again. Yes. Thank you. Take bye, care. Chris. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Boop, boop. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right. We're going to take a break here on Breakfast Television. We're going to get it together. I promise. It's Monday morning, 625. Taking a quick one. We'll be right back.